Hi folks, let's walk through how to model up this part in Fusion 360. It was a part that a viewer sent in and just said, hey, how would you model it? Kind of looks like a, uh, almost like a three jaw chuck type thing. And it, it looks like it's complex. I think you're gonna see it's pretty easy. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. First thing I'm gonna do is F6 brings up this thing called Screen Hunter. It's a free piece of software, super useful. It's gonna let me, it's gonna let me take a screenshot and I use dual monitors so I can now just have an image of this on my second monitor over to the left. New design. First thing we always do, right click on the file name, new component. We'll call it the probe part. And I'm gonna save it. Fusion Friday demo. Saving it starts the auto save, really important. Keyboard shortcuts, folks. C for circle. We now have to choose the plane to work on. I'm gonna pick this plane right here, which is perpendicular to the blue line. That's our Z axis. You'll notice if mine looks different than yours, I've done two things. I've turned off the sketch grid and I've turned off snap. Just my preference. Sketch grid, I don't really like it. Snap, I really don't like because that snaps things to sketch grids, which isn't, you know, I, I want to control where things go. I don't want them snapping into a, a, the wrong place accidentally. Uh, by having those options off, though, it's a little quirk. That I've got to turn my origin back on because I do want the center of our part to be right here in the origin, sketch out, and we don't actually have dimensions for this. Uh, we're just going to make it uh, approximately three uh, approximately similar, so three inches. E for extrude. Click, and I'll say negative 0.5. So we've got our base coin. Uh, if we take a look, the center area here is relieved down. So I'm going to hit C for circle. Where do I want to sketch? I want to sketch on this top plane here. Snap it to the center, drag out, and just place it this time. Now I'm going to hit D for dimension. I'm going to click on the outside circle here. Move my mouse over and click on the inside circle here. And now I can place a dimension which is the thickness of that, um, oops, 0.1, of that little groove. Hit E for extrude. Click and we'll say negative 0.25. And eh, we'll say negative 0.1875. That looks better. Actually, you know what? We'll go down here, right click, edit feature, say negative 0.125. That looks a little bit more accurate, like so. So first thing we've got, these two center holes up here with this boss in the middle. Oops. L for line. I'm gonna sketch on this plane. And I want a vertical line that we're gonna use as a construction line. But I like to create things out of place and use the constraint over here to snap them in. Much safer, especially if you're new. So clicking on the center dot, I'm gonna drag a line intentionally at an angle. Hit escape to stop the line. Click on the line once and hit the X key. Turns it into a dotted line. That's a construction line. Now I'm gonna click horizontal vertical and click on the line once. Uh, I now, if you will, we're still in the horizontal constraint, so I'll hit escape, so we're back to normal mode. I've now got this dotted black line. It's black, which means it's fully constrained, but it's not really accurate, because see how I can drag it up and down, and I kind of just want it to be locked into place, at least for now. So if I click this little keypad here, fix or unfix, and click on the dot at the end, now it really is locked in place. C for circle, and again, sketch it out of place. So we'll just say 0.1875, D for dimension. I'm making these dimensions up, by the way, so don't worry about uh, following along there. We'll say 0.15, maybe. So 1 .5, 0 0.15 off, and one. I'm just ballparking it here. That looks good, 1.25. And I think there was a through hole as well. So we'll sketch that now. C for circle, we'll say 0.075. Uh, 
Now I can hit E for extrude, click here, and we'll say negative 0.125. Uh, you know what, that looks a little bit deep. So again, we can go down here to this, the last feature. If you don't know which one it is, you know, when this gets to be really long, I just click it. See how I get the three little dots above it? Very helpful. So right click, if you can't edit it, it means it's something is selected. So I'll just drag a box here to deselect everything. Edit feature, and we'll say negative 0.08. That looks better. To get that center tit to be a through hole, I can hit E for extrude and just click on it. And sometimes when it's through hole, instead of typing in a number, I'll just drag that red arrow way down, because who cares? Now it's all the way through. Because we started this uh, whole circle on the origin, I've got a natural plane right there that I can use if we go to create mirror. Well, what do I want to mirror? Uh, I want to mirror a feature because features are these things down here. So what's the object that I want to mirror? Both this and this. And so it's not letting me click the second thing. Oops. Oh, that was weird. Never seen that before. I'll try it again. Create mirror features. So objects, hold down the control key. That'll let you select one and then two. What's my mirror plane? It's this plane right here. Now you can see a little preview. Looks like it's in the right place. Click OK. Awesome. We've got to do some holes over here on the left. So let's say L for line. Sketch on this plane. And again, just drag a line out here. Hit X, make it a construction line. And I need to set its angle. And I don't have, you know, I don't think, unfortunately, I can use the axis, uh, which I wish I could. I really wish I could. So we'll have to create another construction line. L right here. And, you know, sometimes you can go ahead and snap them into place vertically. I, I really do like that constraint, but I can see that that constraint's already there. D for dimension. And now I can click this line. And if I click this line, it switches to an angle. We'll say 45 degrees. Now I can do C for circle. Click a circle right here. We'll say 0.25. I want that circle to be 0.15. And we'll say 0.1875 off. And we'll place it 1.5. Nope. 0.2. 1.2. That looks good. Make that a little tighter in there. Okay. Now I want another one of those circles opposite it. So here, I, I normally don't like doing mirrors and sketches, just a personal thing. Here it actually does make sense because I've got this line, I don't have a plane. I don't want to create a plane if I don't have to. So sketch, mirror, what's my object? This guy, what's my mirror line? This guy, boom. And those go down, E for extrude, click 1, 2, negative 0.25 maybe. Looks good. Okay. There were center dots in those things as well. Uh, we can add those. Yeah, we can add those right now. C for circle. Should just snap to 0.05. Okay, so that's interesting. We Because we clicked this bottom floor here as our sketch plane, it automatically gave us what's called basically a project. So it knows that we're in the center of that circle. It doesn't see that over here. Um, it just doesn't know where the center is. So hit P for project, click that, and that gives you that point. Click OK, C for circle, click here, and I want them to match. So I'll hit D for dimension, click it, I'll place the dimension, and see how it's, right now it says 0 0.10869, whatever, 4. Instead of typing anything, just move your mouse over and click the first dimension. 
D23. So it's going to formulaically link it back to the other one, which is exactly what I wanted. E for extrude, 1, 2, negative 0.05, perfect. Now let's switch over and handle this slot. I'm going to hit L for line, and I'm going to sketch a line right here. Now, I can't tell. I kind of know because of these two little dots, but it, it's kind of annoying that it moved it around, and I, I want to see the other side. So if I right-click on my part, I can't do that right now. Stop sketch. Right-click. Opacity control. We'll set it at 50% just for now, and that will show us what we need to see. So I'm going to go back to the home position, and it gets really confusing sometimes now when the opacity is down. Um, I'm actually going to delete that last sketch because we didn't use it for anything. I don't want it to be there because it's just waste. So click on it, hit delete. L for line, and I want to sketch on this plane. So see that? It actually moved it upside down, and you can see it because our bottom is upside down. Not a huge deal, but kind of weird. So, regardless, L for line, same thing. We're going to sketch a vertical line and another line. So this one will both be constructions. This one will be vertical. And now I can make this 45 degrees. See that bisects those two circles? Perfect. So I really do want it to work to work in the correct orientation. So I can click the left arrow thing here, which should rotate me up. Awesome. So now check this out. We want these to be at their correct angle. I will go to Sketch, Rectangle, Center, Rectangle. Again, don't place it in place. Just sketch a center rectangle out here. We'll worry about it later. So I like the center rectangle because it gives me a rectangle where all four sides are either parallel or perpendicular. Um, the problem is I can't rotate it. And that's because if you take a look, there's one constraint here that is the horizontal vertical. So if I delete that, nothing changes. But what I can now do is click parallel. And I'll click this. And then I'll cl click this. I now have a center rectangle that is parallel to my guideline. Perfect. I also know that I want, if I click coincident, that center dot to be coincident with that line. And if you take a look, knock on wood here, I should be able to drag this thing up and down. I didn't mean to change the size. Um, up and down this line. Isn't that funny? It's like it collapses on me. So perfect. So now I can hit D for dimension. We'll say that should be 1, 0.85 maybe. And the width of this should only be 0.2. Sure. And honestly, that's all I have to do. I don't even need to worry about the fact that I've got this extra here because I can just hit E for extrude, click, say negative 0.2, and boom. Got it. Let's go change our opacity back to 100. The last thing I've got to do, and it's going to be pretty similar to what we just did, is this center little center boss right here. Um, and let's reuse the sketch where we made these holes. So if I right click, I can see edit profile sketch. That's going to bring me all the way back here. Uh, here we go, to this sketch, which I like because, actually, it's putting me in the feature. Hmm. Let's try that again. Edit profile sketch. There we go. Because I've already got this vertical construction line, because we're going to do a very similar thing. Sketch, rectangle, center rectangle, sketch a center rectangle. This one I can leave sort of vertical or horizontal because it's going to stay that way. Coincident is the center dot on my construction line. 
hit escape and now I can drag this down to like here and I'll say this should be oops dimension this should be point 0.18 maybe not even 0.1 not even 0.08 looks better and I'll say here to here should be 1.25 nope that's too much 1.25 that looks good and now again I don't need to worry about the top I can just hit E for extrude if I click this what's nice and it you don't it's hard to see but it actually accommodates the fact that this is not a square top but rather pulls in the radius from or, or circumference from our ring and I can just click this oh come on try it again E for extrude click this like this and it pulls it right up to the top really important make sure the operation here is join and not say a new body I want it to just be the same you know the same body I want to turn that sketch off though this is really important so I'll expand my part on the left expand sketches turn that sketch back off and the last thing we need to do create pattern circular pattern again pattern features is already selected which is what I want what are the objects hold the control key <clears throat> and I want to do this which is that vice or that jaw thing and this and that axis will be here already had quantity three click OK and I did this when I was practicing, and I thought it was kind of cool because I realized I goofed. That's not supposed to be 45 degrees. It's supposed to be 60 degrees, and this is what's cool. It's so easy to fix. We'll go back into the sketch where we created these guys. So if I right-click, Edit Profile Sketch, and change this to 60. Stop Sketch. Only thing that happened is our vice jaws things didn't, those are vice jaws I know, but three jaw chuck didn't update. So same thing, I'll just right click. And you know what? Let's do this actually before we do that. Um, not that this is going to be parametric per se, but let's just show a better way to do this. Edit profile sketch, 60 degrees. See how it says it's D17 right there? Remember that. Right click, edit profile sketch. Oh, come on. Why well, that doesn't work every time? Right click. Is it because I'm not clicking on it first? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, maybe because I was clicking the wrong one. Regardless, double click on the 45 degrees and change it to D17. And now it's formulaically linked, so if we change it again, we'd be, we'd be good. And the last thing I forgot was there's a through hole in the center. Same thing. Let's not create a new sketch. That should have been on our original sketch. So I'll right-click on the first sketch, edit, C for circle, snap a circle right here, say 0.375, hit stop sketch, and it's not there. That's because we've got to go to the first extrude here, right click now see I can't edit it drag a box now you can edit hold down the control key and you can just deselect that center circle and we're done so I hope you guys see that's honestly pretty darn quick to do there probably are even better ways but I regardless I hope you guys enjoyed take care see you next Friday